Hi, thank you again for joining me. My name is Dwayne from Quick Biz Education. And today we're gonna to be looking at sample methods. So remember now that when you have a population, you need to have a sample from the population when you're conducting a research, whether you're doing a market research or any research. Sampling is uh, a critical part of research because it saves uh, on time and energy. And um, you need to know the different methods of sampling. <clears throat> so while we are here looking at market research, we are looking at these uh, five different methods of sampling according to what the IB Business and Management syllabus requires of us. So we want to look at random sampling, we want to look at stratified sampling, we want to look at cluster sampling, we also want to look at snowballing and also quota sampling. All right, so let's jump into this and remember you can use this also for your internal assessment because uh, remember you're doing a primary research and you will need to pull information from the population so you probably would want to use um, one or probably two of these methods it depends on what you're doing all right so let's look at random sampling so in random sampling it's really where there is an equal chance that anyone from the population can be selected so we're not having the idea to say that, okay, we're going to be selecting this person or we're not going to be selecting this person. We're just going to be randomly selecting uh, individuals uh, from the population. Now, in doing the random sampling, you it, it can be time consuming and the interviewer needs to have like some knowledge in, in, in interviewing in order to get accurate data which I have over on the other side, which in a random sampling is least bias and uh, there, there are no preconditions because remember you're just looking at the population and you're just randomly selecting individuals. However, on the quota sampling, respondents are segmented into specific groups with similar characteristics. So based on things that are identical with uh, correspondence within a particular population, then we would segment those individuals accordingly. You know, so for example, we might want to select 20 males, uh, age 18 to 25, that is specific and it's direct. And also, let's say that we're doing something about technology and we might want to select students who would have graduated with a uh, bachelor's in computer science or information technology. So there is that pre-selection, which as I have there, could actually lead to uh, bias in terms of collecting the information. But uh, this information could be more accurate because you're actually using individuals who have that background in what you want. For stratified sampling, it's, it's similar to quota sampling where there is a segment. So we have a segment, but it's not a specific target. So we have a segment that we want. Again, we might choose a segment based on uh, similar characteristics, but it will not be so targeted. So we might want males but it will not be targeted to say males 18 to 25. And that's the difference between stratified and quota. One is segmented with a specific target group, whereas stratified is segmented, but not a specific target group, okay? So you have a special group, but then you randomly select from, so you might have 50 males and you just choose randomly from it for the stratified. For the quota, 50 males, but we're only looking for those who are from 18 to 25. And then what we have here is that the bias could increase due again to pre-selection because we have 50 males, so that's pre-selected. Then we have cluster here. Cluster is about the geographical area, right? This is where 
we would now select uh, respondents for our sampling. Uh, so respondents are randomly selected again from the geographical setup. But the drawback to this is that there could be regional uh, bias in terms of when we're looking, if there are differences in terms of economic and social conditions, then we can have uh, issues in terms of the information that we would collect there. Okay, for snowballing, this is where the existing study subjects, so those who are part of this sampling, they now would make the selection or recruit others uh, to continue the, the, the research. So, uh, for example, let's say a company wants to uh, promote like this shirt here, they would give it first to the employees who would samp, who would uh, wear and give feedback as to how the quality of the shirt or whatever. And then those employees would now select others to be a part of it. So when you have that, what you might find is that you know, it, it, it can create a bias where the, the uh, subjects can influence others. You can give them information about it. You can, you can choose who you feel might fit. And that can give information that might not be entirely uh, correct. So uh, these are the methods that you can use for sampling. You can use it, as I mentioned, for your internal assessment and also for marketing. When you're doing your marketing, um, your market research, you need to have and you need to have an understanding of these methods of sampling. All right, guys. And again, I'm just saying, guys, this is the new uh, hoodie that we're promoting in grain and um, so yeah I'm like sampling this and I'm promoting this so if you're interested in, in getting something like this you can uh, follow the information in the description okay and that is place below all right have a wonderful day